Hi guys, Mike here. You're looking at the little index head that I used to make the gears for my bandsaw a little while back. For those of you that didn't see it, what I did was I made this little mandrel out of some scraps. I made this little dog that I put on the mandrel. So I took the gear And then I had a tailstock. I had a little tailstock that, that came with my dividing head, and that's how I cut the teeth in my gears. So now I have something in mind that I need a chuck for because the uh, shaft that I'm going to be putting detail in is uh, just more or less of a stub. So I want to hold it in a chuck. I got a chuck with this dividing head at the time and I've never got around to mounting it up. So here's what we've got. Here's the chuck. This looks like a pretty pretty decent little chuck. And this is the the faceplate that adapts the chuck to the dividing head. And so what I need to do is I need to clean this face off and I need to turn this face right here and cut a flange in it that will fit in this recess in the chuck. Transfer three holes to this face plate to where it bolts onto the chuck. And then then the chuck will fit on here. And there's my dividing head with a chuck on it. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I just did some indicating and what I found out was that this face back here, which registers on the chuck, and this face right here, which registers on the index head, are parallel within a few tenths. So, and that's good. But when I flip this thing around, I want to be able to use this surface uh, to register on the lathe. So what I'm going to do is take a light skin cut on this surface here. So that should put this surface parallel with this one and this one back here. You notice that I couldn't find a good way to hold that in the chuck and use that face. So I'm going to plan B and I'm going to cut a plug that duplicates the size of the dimensions on the index head and I'll turn right off of that face which will be better anyway. I was just hoping that I could uh, avoid the time. I really like this little work light 
and it's bright enough to where you can really see what's going on but the camera doesn't like it it really washes things out I'm gonna have to figure out different a different angle or something Now I just want to double check and make sure this face is running uh, good in parallel. Looks like around a half a thousandth. The outside is a non-working surface, but we'll take a skin cut just to beautify it. This step will be about 125 thousandths deep, so I'll just touch off on this front face and zero out my travadial. So now we have the faceplate machined up. Cut this flange into it and we face the back side. So uh, it, it has a pretty good fit here on the chuck. I can detect no, no play in that whatsoever. So now the next step is there's three mounting holes on the chuck that holds this faceplate on. It, they are these three screws are, let's see, 7.8 millimeters. Is that a size? 7.86 millimeters. They definitely are metric threads. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can put it on the mill and use the DRO to uh, put a whole bolt circle pattern in here and that's one way but the way I prefer is to use transfer screws the problem with transfer screws is I don't have any transfer screws that are metric mine are all imperial okay hold that thought Boy, I gotta quit talking to myself like that.
I'll just take a moment to show you transfer screws. I have these uh, transfer screws from, let's see, what are these? Um, 632, 832, 1032, right on up to three quarters. The traditional transfer screws come in this this little uh, hexagonal, hexagonal one two, hexagonal. Uh, tube and the hex screw I'll show you the three quarters because it's easier to see it uh, has a little hex on the end which fits in this hexagonal tube onto a little socket shape so that you can screw them in and out and it has a little point on them and the object of these is to just mark your center location. Uh, you don't really blast it in there. It's not intended to be a center punch or even a prick punch. It's just intended to give you a witness mark, something just deep enough that you can get a uh, prick punch into to, to deepen the hole out just prior to drilling. So that's transfer screws. The second way would be to use transfer buttons, which I also don't, I actually have never owned any transfer buttons, I've seen them used a lot. And a transfer button is similar to a transfer screw, except it's got a little flange on it, and it just has a uh, plug that fits in the size hole that you want to, uh, to mark the location for. And that really is very foolproof. Uh, possibly that's that's the way we'll go here. I'll have to make some. Um, I'll only make three. If I was making a transfer button size that was, you know, prone to be used quite a bit, a pretty common size, uh, I would probably make a set of six. But because these are metrics and I'll probably only use them one time, if I go that route, I will probably only make just three, just enough just enough to uh, do the job here. So that's our decision right now. I guess I am leaning towards the transfer buttons and I'll get back with you as soon as we take a direction. Okay, I'm almost embarrassed to show you this, but this is how I'm gonna transfer these holes I have my 5 16 18 transfer screws. This is obviously a metric, but what I've found is that these transfer screws will go in there deep enough to locate the center. So we'll put those in there. Okay, that's as far in as they'll go before the, the thread starts binding. These do stick up kind of high and of course the thread is not in there very deep. It's enough to locate the center, but it won't really damage these screws because you don't really blast these things in. Actually, uh, for these things to be used properly, you only want them to stand maybe 20, 20 to 30 thousandths proud of the surface that you're uh, using to transfer. But that'll save me a lot of time. I won't have to make the buttons and I really won't have to uh, put it on the mill and, and do all that work. So it's kind of a shortcut method. So on with that and then we can uh, get them center punched and drilled and uh, we should be just about done.
Okay, so I guess we're ready for assembly. Okay, let's see how this lines up. Now, these are metric socket head cap screws, but I just used a uh, Imperial 5 16 counter bore on that and drilled it just as though it was a 5 16 socket head cap screw, and I think that'll work out just fine. So let's pick a wrench here. Okay, everything seems to line up well. Yeah. I countersink them about a 32nd of an inch below the surface. It's not necessary to do any more than that. Now, let's see. So, There, there we go. So that'll do it for this project. I'm ready to go. I'll be using this in a vertical position. And I think that's these two bolts right here. Let me get it. So I'll be using this in the vertical position, and uh, there's a little, somewhere here, there's a little indicator. Get safety glasses off so I can see. I'll just rough set it right now. I think that's, that's supposed to be vertical right there. That's clearly not, so it must be vertical. Of course, I'll, I'll indicate that before I use it to make sure it's uh, the vice jaws are perpendicular to the base. So, yeah. Tighten this up so it doesn't pinch our fingers or something. So that does it for this job. This is complete. This is how I mount the face plate to uh, chuck for the index head. And I hope you got something out of this. I look forward to seeing you the next time. And this is Mike, signing out.